check it. Go. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Janelle Samora, and this is Scent Talk from my closet, the fragrance closet. And on this channel, we go over all things fragrance. If this is your first time watching, I do like to focus on one perfume house or topic at a time. And we've been going over vanilla and gourmand fragrances, which are my favorite. <laughs> For today's review, we are doing a floral fruity gourmand from the Italian niche perfume house called Simone Androli. Uh, I do have a couple of samples from this house and the very first scent that piqued my interest was actually Glaze Ecstasy and I've not been able to get a hold of it. Um, it is said to smell so much like Buonta Lenti and I want to compare it. I want to know. <laughs> I want to experience it for myself. Uh, but for this week we have Pacific Park and we also have Leisure in Paradise. So if this is something you're interested in, go ahead and continue watching. Consider hitting that subscription button and the bell so you'll be notified to new videos. Okay, we have not gone over Simone Androli, so let's go ahead and talk uh, briefly about what this company is all about, or this fragrance house. It is an Italian niche perfume house, earliest creation from 2011, newest creation in 2022, and um, Simone Androli is a name that defines olfactory compositions with memories of distant lands, implanting reflections of a travel journey into every perfume, like the canvas of a painter or the stave of a musician. The journal tells of the constant wandering through the streets of the world, which became individual areas where olfaction becomes history, memory, and emotion. So the experience of a journey in the essence of a memory is what it says on their site. This reminded me so much of a couple of houses we've already reviewed on the channel, one of those being Memo Buddy. They also take inspiration from different lands, from foreign travels, and they bottle them up, you know, those smells that, that are very distinct to that place, so that then their fragrances become very transformative and just, you know, you don't have to jump on a plane in order to be transported to these uh, distant lands. Yes, or, or experiences. For today, Pacific Park is an experience. It is said um, on, the, on the channel, <laughs> this is the channel we're talking about it on. <laughs> um, this particular Pacific Park is a trip to, to an afternoon carnival, uh, childhood, cotton candy, and carefree times during the summer is pretty much the gist of it. It has a longer write-up on the site, but I, I didn't want to be here, um, you know, 15 minutes going over it. <laughs> um, when you get your fragrance, you guys, from this house, I don't have a full bottle, I only have samples, um, you will get a little insert with the the inspiration of the fragrance, which I found to be really, really cool. I looked it up, I saw, uh, you know, the reviews and all that. And so basically the essence of the perfume house is just that, olfactive memories, and they're supposed to be very nostalgic. And um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get into what Pacific Park specifically smells like. I'm not sure if I've mentioned that is it is a floral fruity gourmand. <laughs> um, we've been going over gourmand fragrances, so that that's why we're we're hitting up Pacific Park. <laughs> Not as gourmand as I was expecting it to be in the sense that the dry down and uh, a little bit in the mid as well. It has a, a bit of a floral air. This opens up extremely, extremely sweet and, uh, you know, sweet fruity blend. In the notes, we have pear, black currant, mandarin orange, in the mid, fruity notes, cotton candy, and lily of the valley, in the base, caramel, white musk, and vanilla. Now, I do get a little, um, like a green tone somewhere. I don't know why I'm so sensitive to green tones. Um, you know, and it's it's more than likely this, um, either the black currant or the lily of the valley that I'm getting, smelling a little tiny bit green which I actually love in perfumery. So I do get that at the way beginning. Um, you might not because like I said, I'm really, really sensitive to it. Um, I do enjoy this opening very much so. I do get cotton candy. 
Um, however, I was expecting a much brighter opening. I don't get uh, a whole lot of brightness coming from the mandarin orange. Um, you know, maybe if there had been some bergamot here or some lemon in the top, it might have opened up a little brighter. Um, you know, it's so it's for that reason I was immediately taken aback by it. I was like, oh, I really thought that that would be a little brighter, you know, a little afternoon uh, breezy day at the carnival. <laughs> um, so it is sweet, very sweet actually, the opening, um, just very um, reminiscent. It smells extremely familiar, which I found to be interesting. I was like, oh, I've smelled this before in a couple of fragrances. Uh, one not so cheap and the other at a really nice price point. So we'll go over the comparison in a minute. Um, but let's get into the mid here. I do start to get the floral air to this fragrance, um, you know, in, in the mid of this, of this wear. Some where along the line is it about an hour yeah it's about a good hour or so or hour 15 minutes into the wear i did get to try this it's pretty powerful to me the scent was very strong um so i did get to try it three different times and i still have a little more every now and then i spray it on my hand and i come back to it like well, why do you do this <laughs> an hour and 15 minutes into it Gone is the cotton candy, gone is the Ferris wheel, gone is all of that, and it is replaced, at least on my skin, with an interesting musk. It is just, the musky tones turn very, I like to call it spicy because I can't think of another descriptive word for this. Uh, I just can't, and I want to say that it's the way that the white musk is blending with the caramel. It just, I mean... Um, caramel is a very tricky note for me um, and amber as well ambery tones if they lean the spicy route I don't enjoy them as much as um, I feel I could have so many people do not pick this up out of this scent uh, the only way that I can explain this uh, and I did explain this I think in another video is the way that my lawn uh, my lawn <laughs> Byron Mula Mula um, that fragrance i do have andromeda's moon's version because this one to me was sweeter and way toned down on that on that musky spicy smell that i end up getting on my skin um so i can tolerate that one that mula mula by andromeda's moon i'm sorry i didn't uh show it to the camera here um this mula mula is really really nice on my skin yes it still has that little um, you know, spicy or it's just this note that bothers me that almost all the way in the back of my throat. It's really interesting how it just doesn't jive for me. I'm like, why couldn't we be, you know, just cotton candy and deliciousness and, uh, you know, dry down to a beautiful vanilla musk, just very round, round on my skin. Um, I don't get that. I get this weird, weird spicy tone. <laughs> and I mean, it's not spice like hot, like ow, you know, like um, when you eat spicy food. It's not, it's maybe a little peppery, I guess you could say. I really got to look into this um, because Mula Mula does the same thing to me. Uh, as Pacific Park did as well to me today. Um, I don't full on understand <laughs> when, and I'm trying um, because that makes it really hard for me with notes like these that seem so beautiful and magical and gourmand, you know, and I'm just like, oh, that's a shoe in. I'm going to love it. Uh, to dry down like this, this is not my first rodeo with that type of dry down on my skin. So, um, for that reason, I'm just very glad that I try and stick to sampling. That's just my own personal preference. Um, I don't like to bring in full bottles uh, straight off the bat unless, you know, um, I've maybe heard it from a friend or or um, I just uh, did my research and seen a lot of reviews where it went very well. 
However, this one right here, <laughs> also I don't like to blind buy a full bottle when it's a house that I have not gotten to know. I don't know their DNA. I don't know what their, you know, particular fragrance note accords smell like or how they're gonna jive with me and my skin chemistry. And this, this is, it did not work out for me today, unfortunately. Um, I can, I can appreciate it. I really can except it's just I don't care for it you know the the way that this dries down on me now I did read quite a bit of reviews uh that enjoy it from top to the top to bottom I mean enjoy it <laughs> so that's really really nice if you enjoy Byron's Mula Mula top to bottom you know opening to dry down then you will appreciate Pacific Park by Simone Andreoli um I do enjoy it for the first hour or so hour 15 minutes until that spicy you know little note kicks in i don't mind spice i really don't i have been opening up to it i actually really love the spice that is in this sweet escape um here by pre-production perfumery now that is spice it is a ginger esque type spice um and really heavy and prominent there balsamic even at the opening and i can tolerate it and it dries down so round and smooth and sweet and delicious and and this did not <laughs> um so yeah unfortunately a couple of other spicy fragrances i've tried recently are ambag dominicano by day three fragrances now that has some spice in it also when in Port puerto rico by genre perfumes i have a little sample and that was very musky and had a little bit of that air of spice and, but i enjoyed it so i don't i let's just go ahead and go with the fact that it might be the caramel here that's just whoa <laughs> um you know just really not jiving with me the caramel with the musk i have to be careful with and also ambery musk i have to be careful with um so if those notes do not bother you again like i said you enjoy byron's mula mula then then you're in for a treat here with pacific park oh especially the combinations that you could do with this body care wise huh, it's it's already starting to go there and i didn't spray it too long ago so i guess it was a little less than an hour now at the beginning of the review i did mention that i feel like i have smelled this before so yes it just gave such an air to byron's mula mula with the caramel and all that now that is the pricey fragrance i feel um next tier is the victor rolf bonbon no i just sprayed it over here oh my goodness there's this peach component to this fragrance even though i just uh pretty much dissed it saying that it does not have a bright opening <laughs> the victor rolf bonbon um i might not have said that yet have i said that no <laughs> i have not mentioned victor rolf's bonbon um because that was the next thing we were going to do victor rolf's bonbon also opens up just very i call it warm i'm expecting a bright opening with the peach and the i want to say it also has a uh, nectarine it has a lot of orange there at the top of the pyramid of the notes and i'm expecting just a bright burst of energizing uplifting scent and it just comes out like just very warm to me like almost i get i get this hot sensation like oh okay <laughs> almost like dry oil spray how it, it feels warm on the skin i get that from this fragrance so um but the dry down to this i'm so happy i did not declutter victor and raw uh, bonbon because it is magical <laughs> the dry down is magical here oh you just makes me makes me light up this one does yes it does <laughs> another one that makes me uh light up but this one i sprayed it over here oh this one has a way bigger floral air to it and that would be um ariana grande's um adi her her very labeled um named adi goodness get get it together <laughs> um yeah ariana grande's adi is so delicious it to me it really clings to my skin it gives me a good six hours on skin which is nice for the price point this is one that 
I just will never, I don't ever want to be out of this in the collection. It's just one of those that I can just, I know I'm going to enjoy it. So this gave me a little bit of an air also here with Pacific Park. Um, I wouldn't say that it smells dead on because there's a lot more floral going on in here in the mid than there was in Pacific Park. Um, yeah, Pacific Park was a lot heavier on that lovely cotton candy. Now, uh, last but not least, I do have uh, the Juicy Couture Gold, Viva La Juicy uh, Couture Gold. And this one has that same caramel tone um, that I get in, in like a cotton candy-esque vibe with caramel. Um, just really, really warm also, like, like Victor and Rolf's bonbon. Um, so for that reason, I think it's all in the same kind of scent family. It just, it doesn't smell 100% like Pacific Park, but it reminds me so much of it. So that was the uh, comparisons, you guys. Unfortunately, not a, a you know, 100% love here as far as the entire wear. It did give me a good, who it went, a good eight, nine hours on skin. And it was still in the vicinity. So, I mean, it was here. I'm not going to say that it, it is not a strong fragrance. And I didn't even apply it full on. So, um, yeah, I would say this one goes the distance for certain. Um, and it did have a moderate sillage as well. I could smell it around me. So that was nice too. I really was expecting it to sit closer to the skin than it did. Um, it did kind of waft off a little bit. Um, yeah, but um, all in all, I'm not 100% uh, sold on this fragrance as far as uh, bringing it into the collection. All right, guys, um, that was it for today. We will continue with Simone Andrioli. Um, tomorrow we have Leisure in Paradise. We'll see how that one goes or, you know, the next day that I upload. Um, really, really just looking forward to that pineapple scent. It is supposed to be just, you know, you are on vacation. <laughs> so let's go. <laughs> Y'all have a blessed rest of your day, your night, or your evening, and you stay safe.